A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today, an improvised session. Layer 8 the limit, x to infinity of square root of x squared plus x minus x. Give it a shot and try it out for yourself. And then keep watching the video for hopefully the solution. So this video came to be because of my 12th grade teaching limits once again. And this was a textbook exercise in Germany. 15 years ago was something else. Back then we were a nation of scientists, but now it's all just to approximate kind of what the limit looks like and just write it as an answer. So I know what this is going to evaluate to, namely it's going to evaluate to one half. But I would like to try to solve it because in the textbook it just says, well, um, just put some big numbers in and see what this is going to evaluate to. So at the moment we don't teach any real limit calculations anymore here in Germany. It's it's just not in the cu curriculum anymore. Um, so I would like to try to solve it today using just genuine methods and how I would have shown it to my students like 15 years back when we still solve stuff like this algebraically. And I got two things in my head. One being the method I would choose to show my students and the other one being kind of a university method. Um, so if you see expressions like this, what we usually do is we try to get rid of the square root. Just by squaring this expression, this doesn't work out because it's a limit. All we can do is we can change the expression in here equivalently. So the only thing we can really do is expand this by its conjugate. Conjugate meaning with the square root of blah 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 plus x. Resulting in a numerator being just uh, a difference of two squares. So this is just a standard thing you can do. So we are going to rewrite this as um, limit x to infinity, going to denote it with capital L of, and now we are going to expand this by square root of x squared plus x plus x, meaning we get a denominator of set thing. And up here the difference of two squares. So the square root squared is, is just a thing in and of itself. And then we get negative x squared. And the cool thing about this technique is just that this right here is going to vanish. And now if um, I'm not mistaken, the only thing left to do, it's, it's not much of algebraic manipulation, but you just don't teach this stuff anymore. All you teach is like the first three binomial formulas and that's it. And the students can figure that out. Then it's completely over. It's seriously terrible. And it's, it, it really makes me seriously sad. But I'm going to go the um, asymptotic way basically and just factor out the highest degree part of the polynomial on both the numerator and denominator, which would be x on all terms. And then if we let l go to infinity, we should see what the asymptote is going to look like, namely a horizontal asymptote at y being equal to one half. So we're going to factor out the x on both the numerator and denominator. It leaves us x over here, factoring out the x here giving us a one over here. And if we factor out an x here, we need to factor out an x squared overall under the square root such that we get the square root of x squared, which is the absolute value of x. But since our limit goes to positive infinity, this should just yield x in the process. Times the square root of, here's a plus sign. And by factoring out x squared, we get one plus one of x. Okay, perfect. Um, this and that is going to vanish and no um i have written the x here that is wrong because we are factoring it out to the front completely this was just my thought process written out once again and now we are going to be left with the limit as x approaches infinity of one divided by the square root of one plus um one over x plus one and voila if the limit goes to infinity, we can just make use of the limit rules, the limit on the numerator, and hopefully the, the denominator does exist. Tracking it down here, since the square root is continuous on its whole domain, we can track the limit into here. Limit of a constant is just one, plus limit of one over x for x to infinity goes to zero, leaving us with one over the square root of one plus one, which is nothing other than one half. Okay, perfect. So that worked out and that would be the um, process of evaluating it in a school context, um, at least a few years prior to um, 
what we have now. Now here was my idea for a more university kind of way. So what you could also do is you could probably choose this way and make use of Papa L'Hopital. This is probably something you could do, but I think it could turn out to be a bit cyclic and annoying because of this part here, resulting in one over a square root of blah, 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 which would be the reciprocal once again with this one vanishing. I don't know, this doesn't sound good. My idea here was using derivatives indeed, but the Taylor series expansion for this part or to be more precise, a Laurent series expansion. So a uh, Taylor series expansion at x going to infinity because of the limit here of this part right here. We are going to rewrite our function and we are going to define a function um, f of x to be equal to just this part where we factor out the x squared, giving us the absolute value of x on the outside. So square root of one plus one over x. And for Laurent series expansion, what to do, you can introduce a substitution. Um, let some complex number z be equal to 1 over x. And for the limit as x approaches infinity, our z goes to 0, making it just a regular Maclaurin series expansion of this function that we get right here. So in other words, we are going to equivalently rewrite this as f of z being equal to the square root of 1 plus z. And I have made videos on this channel how to evaluate the Maclaurin series expansion here, but I don't have it in my head because I think it involves double factorials and shit like this. So it's, it's kind of quite annoying, but all we really need for the Laurent series expansion is the big O notation. So how is this function going to um, just behave asymptotically for bigger powers of x and see if everything is going to vanish at the hands of uh, the Maclaurin series expansion. So what we're going to do is we're just going to evaluate the first three or four terms of the series expansion and see if we can get a big O, which is hopefully in the um, range of one over x something. All those O's are going to vanish and we are going to be left with hopefully just the leading term of one half because the limit is one half, which is the asymptote and, and this should work out hopefully at least in my head. So what we're going to do is we're going to take derivatives. So the square root of one plus z is nothing other than um, one plus z to the one half power. So f prime is going to be um, one half, one plus z to the negative one half. Then f double prime is going to be negative one half times one half times one plus z to the negative 3 over 2. f triple prime is going to be uh, negative 1 half times 1 half times 3 over 2 times what we get here, 1 plus z to the negative 5 over 2. I'm going to do one more just to be sure, what you can see here is we are going to get double factorials out. So I don't even need to think about that anymore um, because yeah, you can already see, see a pattern here. So we're going to track the five over two down. It's going to be an alternating series. I missed the alternating part. I think it probably won't change anything about anything, but negative and positive. So the next part is probably negative here, yeah. negative one half times one half times three over two times five over two times one plus z um, to the negative seven over two. Okay, and now we are going to evaluate all of those at zero because um, it's going to be zero because one of x is going to go to zero for x to infinity. So um, f of zero, our le leading term is going to evaluate to square root of one, which is one. f prime of zero is going to be uh, one times one half, which is one half. And this is what I said. I hope the leading um, term is going to um, turn out to be one half in some kind of way. One is still our leading term, but we'll see how that turns out because don't forget, we are dealing with this function right here, which is x times all of this. So this part right here is x times all of this right here. So the leading term should involve an x, which hopefully cancels out with this one. Then f double prime at zero is going to evaluate to negative a quarter and so on. f triple prime at zero is going to be three over eight. And f quadruple prime of zero is going to be 
over 16, something negative, something over 16, and we got 15. Okay, let us write the Maclaurin series expansion out, which is just going to be all of those multiplied by the powers of x, one after another, and divided by the factorial on each and every term. So our function square root of 1 plus x, and I'm not going to check the radius of convergence because it should all check out. I believe um, we are going to get 1 plus um, 1 half times x to the first power divided by 1 factorial, and then minus 1 quarter times 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus, and then 3 over 8 times 1 over 3 factorial times x cubed plus and so on. I'm going to leave it at that. And this is 1 plus z. Yeah, this is 1 plus z. So substitute all of those by a z. And then if we multiply our x in to get this one right here, that means that um, the limit of x to infinity of um, so if this right here c this is bugging me right now then we get that this is 1 over x 1 over x here and then 1 over x squared um, 1 over x cubed and so on this is a bit better um, then we're going to get x times the square root of 1 plus 1 over x minus x is the same as due to our low whole series expansion we are going to get Multiplying the x in, the limit as x approaches infinity of x plus 1 half and 1 over x, this is going to just evaluate to 1 half. And then we are going to get minus some constant c all the time. And we are going to get on each and every term some kind of power of 1 over x. So plus o of 1 over x most definitely, and we still have our negative x here. This and that is going to cancel out. For x to infinity, our asymptotic expansion goes to zero, leaving us with one half in the process, and this checks out. And I hope I didn't make any mistakes. At least it yields to one half. And I think using a Laurent series expansion, so Taylor series expansion at x equal to infinity is pretty damn cool. And you probably haven't seen this at university because this is most often not talked about. Most of the time you don't even get taught Taylor series expansion, but only Baclorian series expansion. So this is fun. And you can try to do this for different functions too. And I hope you have enjoyed what you have seen today. That was a nice improvised session. That was a nice exercise. I really liked that. And if you are interested in more things like analysis, Taylor series expansions, and the graphical representations behind functions like those, then the contents of today's sponsor brand might be the perfect fit for you. Um, I haven't even talked about this, but one of the ways to evaluate limits like those is at, at least in schools at the moment to draw the graph. And this graph is actually quite interesting. Um, it's a piecewise function just because of the um, part of the domain that we can't use be between uh, zero and negative one, the square root is not defined. So it actually looks something like this. So negative one here looks like this and the other part looks like this where um, one half is our asymptote. And I think that this is pretty cool. And Taylor series expansions also brings you to stuff like derivatives and tr trying to find the derivatives of um, piecewise continuous functions, for example, is pretty exciting. And to get a better understanding of how you can understand the derivative of such a piecewise function, it really helps to take a look at visualizations. And Brilliant is seriously good at implementing visuals to give users a better understanding of the problems at hand. Brilliant is your source for some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. Doesn't matter what you want to learn today, analysis, calculus, quantum mechanics, or maybe something in chemistry. Brilliant definitely got everything that you are looking for to get further in your studies at high school, or maybe in any STEM field that you can quite possibly think of at university. And their course concept is just absolutely amazing. As mentioned before, they are using visuals, graphics that you can play around with, that you can get interactive with, to get a better understanding of, for example, 
the derivative of a square root, or maybe what it means visually to have a Lipschitz continuous function to, for example, um, use the picard lindelof theorem to solve a differential equation. I, I mean, this is kind of far-fetched, but this is what they also do. They not only do basic stuff like dealing with square roots, they also do higher mathematics and physics, and you can seriously use it even if you are not an undergraduate anymore, but a graduate and want to learn something about the mathematical theory behind general relativity. And you should just try it out. You should not take my word for it. You should go over to Brain and use my link at the top of the description, print.org slash flamblemaths, or the QR code somewhere up here in the corner to get a 30 day free trial of amazing awesomeness. Try the whole landscape of Brain for completely free. Check everything out to your heart's content. And if you feel like this could be something for you for a, a longer period of time, a long-term relationship between you and Brain, then you must definitely make use of the link completely. And the first 200 people to do so get 20% off an annual Prim subscription. So check it out and support the channel this way massively and also passively. And you are definitely going to learn something new on a daily basis and you're going to get a huge profit out of investing in Brain your time and also your money in print. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And this concludes today's video. I'm going to give Hagoromo Chaik Des a kiss. And after the next video, actually guys, a film day. That was a fun one. We really like this. See ya.